Good morning, Rabbi Boisai. Ah! The Ilui Nishmas Imi Marasi Ruspas Mordechai, whose yard side happens to be today. My mother, Allah Shalom, was nifter at the very young age of 49, and that is the exact age that I am today. My mother, I'll just tell you a little bit about her. Not, I don't want to bore you. She was a big tzaddikis. She had many, many friends. One of the things that we heard during Shiva over and over and over, everybody thought that they were her best friend. Very popular woman, very funny, very this. And she had one thing, she always wanted my father to learn Torah. My father never earned a living, he was never in Kailal, he refused to take money for learning, so she was the breadwinner. She was a teacher, and besides being a teacher, and then later on a principal, she was Nifter in Muncie, and she was a principal in Ramapo in Muncie when she was Nifter. She took care of the house, she took care of us, because my father was learning all the time. She did all the carpools, all the taxi driving, and she's a huge, huge balas chesed, always making food for other people, being visiting bigger chaylem, cleaning people's houses, crazy. I don't know how she did it. She had a tremendous amount of koychas. Her neshama should have an aliyah. Um, today is 19 days in the Oimer. Hayoyim tisha asr yoyim she'eim shnei shavuois ve'chamisho yamin ba'oimer. Or lo Oimer. I will be fasting, Be'ez Hashem, as I typically do on her yard side. It's not a Kabbalah. I, the first year, Reb Khan Kanevsky said, don't fast the first year, and then if you want, you can fast afterwards. So I try to fast. So I'm not going to be drinking water today. And so go easy on me. This is from Sid Wellman. Doing the, ha- doing the daf in the hospital after aneurysm in the abdomen surgery. Hashem does nisim. Shmuel Yosef ben Dvira, here he is. On the screen, if you're able to show, are you show? Uh, no. Oh, Ishkoyach. You can continue showing, it's fine. My Rabbi Rebelli, I think you'll enjoy the close story by Rabbi Melech Bitterman. Fine, it's a different, for a different time. Uh, it's very appropriate for you. Vamos. Bar Hashem, I had a grandson yesterday, another golden dove. I'd like to say it's related to my askanas for Dafyomi, and particularly your shir, depending on whom you ask. By the way, I have to give him a gross Ishkoyach, Paris Chaim Levin. He was the one that brought the Chalitza shoe to the Shear in Brooklyn. It was very, very cool to have it. And now I'm back over here and I have our very own Chalitza shoe. When necessary, we'll pull it out. Depending on whom you ask, I already signed up between 120 and 170 people. So he's in competition with Rafal the Barber. But then he goes on to say, he's not in competition. Unfortunately, I don't keep track. As I'm more interested in getting more people to have a kvias and learning than the numbers. Although numbers are fun too, nothing like a healthy competition. I always keep Gemara's in my uniform and sign in my card to be ready for an opportunity. I guess you can call me Dafyoyimi Minuteman. Is that a Minuteman? Is that how you pronounce What is that? What is that? Wikipedia. Look it up. Biedidus. Peretz Chaim Levin. Here's a car spotted. Eight Daf. Is this for real? Like, is this a Daf car? Or it just so happened to be? It says eight and Daf. I don't know. It looks like it. What is that? In England or something? By Mechi Wurzberger, it was nice to follow some of the live stream while you were away. To add to the Vard, you said about your father-in-law today, I once heard, Menoyach said, Menoyach is grappling with the Malach, said, repeated, Shomer, keep it as, you should keep it as well, meaning Shimshan and will need to be, see the, by example, as Malach told Menoyach, he too needs to be a Nazar to lead by example. Okay, I'm not going to read the rest. Have a wonderful day. Mechi Wurzberger, MDY, Toronto, Ishkoyach. And today's sponsor, the month sponsor for the Koilo, is L'schus, Shiduchin versus Mishpacha. Parnas HaChoydish. Lili Nishmas, Arav Zacharyish, Shimon HaKoyin, Wallerstein, Zeichet Tzadik Levrocha by his kids. Or Wallerstein. Parnas HaChoydish. Aaron Freeman, L'schus, Ketanyi Panos, Siyad HaShemayin, Aslok to Rebelli. Parnas HaChoydish. The Boyer family. Lili Nishmas, Rabbi Liyo, Zechorin Al-Bracha, Ben, Rabbi Avram, Neri Yoyer, Eli Weinberg, Allah Shalom, dear family, friend, who suddenly passed away the Shabbos at the age of 59. He loved MDY, he was proud to be part of this amazing Daf Yom Yishir. Parnas HaChoydesh, walk and sing family, in main Kemach, in Torah, in main Torah, in Kemach. By the lack and love of families like New Jersey, because Torah is the best gula. Parnas HaChoydesh, as a schos, to Aaron Zatzlacha, and to you, 
By the way, I was just told yesterday, somebody is basically promised $100,000 to uh, MDY and the Gemara Initiative, I believe, because he saw Nisim Gluim, the people that gave money to MDY because of the Schus Not kidding. I just heard this yesterday. So, whoever you are, Yishkoyach, I know who you are, you know who you are. By Lagan to Aaron's at and to you. And the video editor, it doesn't mean that everybody else is potted from giving because you already gave 100 out. Our budget is over a million dollars a year, by the way. And no, somebody asked, do I get paid? No, I pay. I don't get paid. And the video not missing a shield. Zechin Shmuel Avram Yisro Ben Ben Yamin. Parents of Chodesh anonymously lead in Shmuel Chayo Bas Yosef. Parents of Chodesh anonymously is a course of Toif to Hashem and is a schus for continuing health and bracha. Oh, it's Yossi Klein's birthday today. Thanks for pushing me to do the daf Yankel from Fidelity. Is that like uh, I didn't read this yet? Karnax. Fidelity Karnax. Is that like uh, ad for him? Yaakov and Malka Slatu. For our something like that, for our son. What? Oh, it doesn't say that here. Slatus. Yaakov Malka Slatus. Yishkoyach. Slatus. Yaakov Malka Slatus. For our son. You sure? That's him? For our son. Alta Yishayi Ben Malka Chaya undergoing a medical procedure today. Is that, you know them? And the, you know this, this kid? Yeah, this kid. Alta Yishayi Ben Malka Chaya should have a full shleima. The Ossin grandchildren. Zeichen Ishmas. Mr. Leo. Shachter Yitzchok, Aryeh Ben Menachem Mendel, Neshama should have an Aliyah, Rabbi Yisai. I have to do another warning, parental guidance, it's one of those sugyas. I have a riddle, not a great riddle, but if you're doing the sugyas with us, we mentioned this a number of times. How's it possible? You have a woman who's a Be'ula, she was with a man, but she's not a Zaina, she's not a Grusha. Yeah. Uh, he's listening to another re- uh, uh, Magachir over there, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Caught you. <laughs> <laughs> he went to another Magachir to see the Gemara. Yeah, right, right. excuses, excuses. <laughs> and then he asked me cash. That's a middle shear. Okay, great. Thank you. <laughs> no, she's not. She's not a Zaina. She's not a Lamana. She's not a Grusha, and she doesn't have a husband. How's it possible? <laughs> she's still, what? <laughs> yes, that is the answer. So we'll see that in the Gemara. You guys remember Mimaenes? The girl was married off by her mother. And then she refuses the marriage. She's not considered a Zion. Okay, we'll see in the Gemara. We have very, very interesting uh, Gemaras today. Says the Gemara. We learned in the Mishnah, Nis Armalu Oi Nis Garshu. What happened? You have a Kayan, a regular Kayan who is Mekadesh, Erusin, a Grusha, which he's not allowed to, or a Kayan Gadol who's Mekadesh, Erusin, an Almana, which he's, he's not allowed to marry. Does she lose her ability to eat truma? Now, the Mishnah continues and says, what happens if, wow, today, Tzadik, we have to make sure that when you come here, it has to be off. Thank you. Okay. Now I'm saying it because yesterday also, saying we have to do it one time. Can't let it slide. Uh, it disturbs the ilam. The almana who was engaged to this Kayan, the Kayan dies. Now what happens? They never, the whole problem is that there's going to be a Bia that's illegal. But in this case, it never happened. The guy died. So the Mishnah says it's okay. She goes back to eating Truma. So very, very interesting Shiloh. Here's the Pasuk. Vehu Isha Bifsuleha Tzadik. I know you're instead of Gary, but you gotta Revavram, Shom Aleichem. Hi. Can't be on your phone. 
No phones here today, you understand? Tomer, be on top of it. Anyway, I'm kidding. He's, you're allowed, you're calling Gary Seder. It says in the Pasuk, Oh, very good. Not only this Pasuk, but most of the Pasukim on today's daf, this week's parasha here in Eretz Yisrael. Amazing. Parashas Emor, Perekhafal Pasuk Yud Gimel. A Kayan has to marry a Psula. Now, the question of the Gemara is, according to Rashi, Shmuel kind of understood the question, is the Kicha consider, what's Yikach? Is it the Erosin, the Kiddushin, or is it the Nesuin? Is it step one or step two? In other words, if he was Mekadosh Akhtana, a Naira up to 12 and a half years old, and then she became a Begeres, she became 12 and a half years old before he's able to do Nesuin, is he allowed to marry her? Because the Torah says he has to marry a Psula, and she's a Begeres. She's a Begeres, and a Begeres, what's going on today? Yeah, yeah, hold on, hold on. Chill. A Begeres is not considered a Psula 100% because she doesn't have all the Psum that she had when she was younger. And the Balaturim, if you look at this Pasuk, on the Pasuk that he brings here, if you look at Bif Sulel, it should say, V'u Isha Besula Yikach, as the Gemara is going to discuss, there's an extra Yud, an extra base, and he learns that it's a Remez to the age of 12. That when you're 12 years old, you have all the Psulim, that's when you have Psulim Shleiman. So the Gemara asks, Bosan Isun Azlinon, or Bosar Eirusun Azlinon. Amalei, Tinisua. We learned it in our Mishnah. This Armelu, in his Garshu. So if this Grusha who's Mikudish to a Kayan and she's Mishtamer, so be Psula, there's gonna be a be Psula soon. The Kayan dies. Zaman is Gajman is soon Psulois. Mina Erusin Cherais. If he dies after there's Nisuin, the apostle. Khalala. Mina Erusin Cherais. So what do you see from here? If she got divorced from a Kohen Gadol, the Kohen Gadol divorced her from Erosin, she doesn't become a Chalala. So what do you see from here? That what creates Kicha, if she, if she could go scot-free after Erosin, that means that's not considered Kicha. That's considered, they, they, there's no, nothing going on between them. It was just Kiddushin. That's why she could go out and she could eat Truma. If Erosin was considered kicha, then she wouldn't be able to eat truma for the rest of her life. She would be a chalala. And the fact that our Mishnah says she could go on, you see that it's Nisuin that creates the problem, the, the kicha, and therefore, in our question, the fact is that he did not marry a psula. He married a begeres. And it has to be, the kicha has to be by the Erosin. Not the Kicha has to be by Erosin. Since she has to be by the Nesuin. The Kicha is Nesuin. So she has to be a Psula by the Nesuin. And she isn't. She's a Begeres. The Gemara is going to go into Begeres, the problem. Says the Gemara. That was my question. That's posh that everybody agrees. That she's a chalala through Bia. Bia creates chalala. But that wasn't my question. Ki kama bayli. Vui isha b'sulei yikach. So he kind of repeats the question that we thought we understood. Vui isha b'sulei yikach. Mai. Ki cha de kiddushin b'inon. A ki cha de nesuin b'inon. Certainly when it comes to being a chalala, that's Bia. But we're asking if the word ki cha, vui isha b'sulei yikach, could it be yaitse that ki cha when... It's Beirisin. And not to worry what happens after the Erisin. She becomes a Begeris, not a Begeris. She loses her Psula. At the end of the day, when he did Kiddushin, she was a Psula, and that's enough. Or maybe not. It's when you, he does Nisuin, she has to be a Psula. We learned this also. Amazing case. He did Kiddushin to a woman who was an Almana. 
She's a widow. Now he's allowed to marry a widow because he's just a regular Kayan. And then they, they gave him the good news. They said, hey, you're up. You are a Kayan Gadol. So what's the halacha? Yichnais. In other words, the main thing is that he got engaged or Erusin, Kiddushin, when he was allowed to. The Nisuin part is going to be a problem, but it's not a problem. She's going to be an Almanata, a Kayan Gadol, when this Nisuin. But it's, that's okay, because the, the main part is that the kicha by Erosin was okay. So look at this pasuk. You shouldn't marry an almana grusha. In Besulam out, yikach isha. The chayra, the words yikach isha are extra. Yikach isha. So, from the extra yitur, There's a special halacha that he's allowed to stay married to her. But Mehecha Teisa, that we know it also to our case of a Begeres. This is an Almana, special halacha, Almana Yikachisha. He could take her, even though she's an Almana when there's Nisuin. She wasn't a, and he was allowed to get engaged to her because he was a regular Kayan. He wasn't a Kayan Gala. This is a special pasuk, Yikachisha. But how do I know about our case of a Begeres? He got engaged to her, he was Mekadashur when she's a Tana, then she turned into Begeres. He was Mekadashur when she was 12, then she turned 12 and a half. Maybe it's different. Says the Gemara, Hachanami Iksevisha. Okay, the, some want to learn that it's this exact Isha right here, we learn it from here as well. Okay, there's another Pasuk Isha. The point is that there's a word Isha. MMA by Begaris also, we should say the same thing. There's a special positive that tells us that if the Kiddushan were done when she's a Nara, and then she grew to be a Begaris, and then it soon happened then, it's okay. Says the Gemara. No, that's not good. I need that Isha to tell me that uh, Kain Gadol could only be married to one woman. You can't be married to two women. So I cannot learn from the word Isha our case of Begeres, as the Gemara Maru Isa. But why are you using the Isha to teach me a case that if he got engaged to an Almana and he was okay getting engaged to the Almana, why is he okay? Because he's a regular Kayan. And then he turned into a Kayan Gadol. Nothing happened. It's okay. Stay married to her. But our case, that he was okay when he got engaged because she was a Nara, and then she turned into Begeres, that we can't learn from Isha. We have two things we can learn from the word Isha. And the very, very similar cases, like logically speaking, they're similar. One is a woman who is allowed to be Mekudosh to because he was a regular Kayan and she's, she's a widow. But then he turned to Kayan Gadol, so this marriage became an usher marriage for him. But since he got engaged to her when, she was, when it was okay, the Torah says, Isha, you're allowed to continue being married to her. Then you have another case. He was allowed to get engaged to this girl because she was a Nara. She's a Psula and a Nara. And then she turned to Begar, she got older. And she, something happened to her, and that I don't learn from the word Isha. That I learned, the Isha I needed for two, two wives are no good. Why should I learn this one, not this one? It says, Gemara, very good. Ha, Yishtani Gufa, ha, ha, lo Yishtani Gufa. When you have a Lamana, what happened? Well, how do you, that's not how I learned. No, no, one woman. Woman, that's how we learned. Okay. Check it out. I'll go upon him. What does it say about you guys in the art scrolls and the Masiftas? Somebody? One lesson. One lesson? Hmm. Why did I think? I, I'm pretty sure I saw it somewhere. Okay. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I take it back. What are you saying? One lesson, not two lessons? Ah. Uh, okay, fine. Either way, it's the same. But I'm very sure I saw that. Fine. time. One lesson of an almana, and not a second lesson of begeres. But why? Why learn the almana one and not the begeres? Says the Gemara, Ishtani gufa of all Ishtani gufa. By an almana, she's the same exact woman. Nothing happened to her. She's the same widow she was yesterday as she is today. What changed is that they appointed him as the kohen gadol. But over here, something happened to her body. She changed. She got older. Her psulim actually changed. Less dam, whatever. Physical things happened to her body. 
And Mamela, that's why we don't learn it from the Isha. Tysus points out that if he got engaged to Aktana and then she got older, and then afterwards he became a Kayan Gadol, so nothing changed in her body, then she'd be okay. It would be the same idea. Zav the Heilige Mishnah, the official Mishnah sponsored anonymously for a schos for my wife and children. We'll stick in for you also, wherever you are. Why not? Nice guy. Only his wife and children. Says the Mishnah, Is that you? You're the one? You're the anonymous sponsor? Okay. Kain Gadol Leisa Almana. Bain Almana Mena Erosin. Bain Almana Mena Nesun. A kohen gadol is not allowed to marry, like it says in this pasuk, "Amonu grusha v'chalal zayna leikach." He cannot marry a widow. It doesn't matter what kind of widow she is, whether she became a widow from kedushin or she became a widow from nisun. I was just reading. Not that I have a lot of time to read. The soldier in Russia, he is told every, you have to go notify the family that your friend died. You have to know, like they take turns. So this guy says, "I don't know how to do it." So he knocks on the door. He says. Are you Mrs. Smirnov, the, the widow? She goes, I'm Mrs. Smirnov, not a widow. He says, like, You want to bet? Kain Gadol Yisa Almana, Ben Almana Min Erisin, Ben Almana Min Anisuin. Vela Yisa is a Begeris. So here it says in Mishnah, a Kain Gadol should not marry the Begeris. Again, it's a physical thing. Some of her psulim are missing. Rebbe Lazar, Rebbe Shimon, Machshirim, Rebbe Begeris, and they say that's not an issue. And we're going to see, they learn it from the Psukim. Veloyiso es mukaseit, it seems like the Rashi learns this Veloyiso es mukaseit, that it's a continuation of Rebbe Lazar and Rebbe Shimon Shita. Mukaseit is a woman who loses her psulim through an external object, anything, a piece of wood, not through relations. How does that affect her when it comes to the Kain Gadol? So Rebbe Lazar and Rebbe Shimon say, that he, a kohen gadol cannot marry such a woman. At the end of the day, it says vu She has to have psulim. She doesn't have psulim. I don't care how it happened. So I want to show you this amazing minchas chinuch. We might have a few minutes here. I, I don't know if you can read it on the screen. They're from the same sefer. I just this is smaller. The one on the right is smaller because I wanted to show you where it is. If you want to find it in the minchas chinuch, it's parshas emar. You know our parsha this week here in Eretz Yisrael. Mitzvah, Reisha, and Beis. If anybody wants to hear Parashas Gdoshim today, let me know. I missed it. I would like to do a minion. Not going to happen, probably. Mitzvah, Kohen Gadol, Lisa, and Listen to this. Anybody, you can take whatever you want out of this. I just thought it's fascinating and sheds a lot of light on some of our Yiddishkeit and what we do. He says like this. Mishosha and Mitzvah, in the middle. Well, what's this whole thing that Kohen Gadol can't marry this one, that one? The main thing about a human being is that he should have a pure mind and good thoughts. The thoughts that people have, they control their, uh, where am I? Uh, their actions that they take go after their thoughts. Therefore, the greatest man alive, or for us, the Kain Gadol, who serves Klai Yisrael, and he represents Klai Yisrael, it's not for everybody, this thing, but for one person in the world, he should only marry a person who never had an outside thought. We're talking about a woman here. The woman never thought about another man, because if she did, it has an effect on her children. The chinuch. Sorry, the chinuch. Shu kodesh kadoshim. This kind gadol. Umetarikach yeh azera sheiten lo yashem mimeno tor v'noki roy lavid b'gedusha. Hashem wants the kind gadol to have the most pure child possible. V'shem atoyim ar miyadem gam psulo kava machshaft avish acher zulasi boy v'nasa v'nasno inel b'acher. But how do we know that this Besula girl, she never thought about another man? So he says, the Chinuch, that it doesn't matter because she's a Ktana. And her Machshavah doesn't really matter. 
if there's an action taken, if she took action, even though she was a katana, then it ruins her thought. But her thought alone is not enough. A thought of a gedayla is enough without action. A human being could ruin or uh, scar, taint their children. And we want to be careful with the kind gadol. But I'm, I, I think, reading this, it seems like we also have that ability to taint our children by thinking. That's why it gives a, a, a sheds a light on machshavis and, and hirurim and all these things. Avakol's man over there, you need to take physical action. But if this Ktana, she was Nival, then she becomes possible. But what about an adult? Once she becomes a big Bagaris, we just learned, even though she wasn't Nival, she's awesome. Her thoughts, rak rak, they're bad. Maybe she thought about another man. And since she's a doyle, it's considered an action. So he makes a difference, uh, he dis- uh, the, distinguishes between a doyle and a ktana. And then we go to the next page. Even though it's a maisa of kiddushin is enough to set her machshava. She was engaged to another man, that's enough to ruin it. She cannot marry a gadol. The maisa poisa of ibikata is machshava a maisa in a ktana, a machshava in a gdoila is what ruins. That's why which we're going to be discussing a lot today, is ruins it, even though she kayamim. He asks a question, but she's still a psula. No, the maisa ruined it. And then he goes on to say, okay, weiter. You get the idea. Ayin Shom in the Chinuch says the Gemara. Turn around, No, it's not interesting. This Chinuch sheds a very fascinating machshava. Turn around, No, because we always think, ah, it's just in my mind. Big deal. So I thought this. I thought this. I was maybe over Isser. But what does it do? It, it does a physical change to the children. That's what it does. Well, you can't be mocking on the whole world. We're mocking on one person called the Kain Gadol. Turn around, that's our Mishnah, that there's no difference. He can't take a widow, whether if she's from Eros and Nisun. Pshita, where does it say anything different? She's an Almana. Ma, the same Alayla of Almana, Almana, Tamar. We know the story with Yehuda and Tamar, and over there she lost her husband. She was a Yavama. And he told her, Shvi, Almana. He called her Almana, but that was only. She was already in the Suha. Maybe every Almana in the Torah. Because I looked it up, in the Torah, there's no other Almana mentioned that has a story. It says, you have to be nice to Almana, treat Almana this way. Treat but the one story in the Torah, in Nacht, there's a few Almanas, but it, it talks about an Almana that was already in the Suha. And the other ones also in Nacht as well. So we don't have a, a, a case of an Almana that's Mina Erusim. So I would think that Erison doesn't count over here. You're not considered an almana from Erison. I've got it. Come on, Shmulon. It's also an Erison. If she was just miskadeshes to any man, and he, and and he loses, she loses that chasen of hers. She's considered an almana. She can't marry Kohen Gadol. Bei Malchinami, as the Minchach the Chinuch explained, because there was an action taken. She had a kedushin. That action ruins it. Bei Malchinami, who told you now? Maybe she's not considered an almana. Do me the grusha. Because Amon and Grusha, it says in the Pasuk, right? That was the Pasuk we had. Amon and Grusha, they go together. And just my Grusha, Beimin and Suin, Beimin and Erisin. Afa Amon, Beimin and Erisin, Beimin and Suin. There's no difference between an Amon, uh, a Grusha for Erisin and Suin. She's considered the same. That we don't have enough Mina. So therefore, Amon also. Vila Yisus HaBegeres. Ton Rabbanon, Vuhu, Isha B'Psula Yikach. Again, our parish, right? Prat L'Begeres, Shukalula B'Suleha. So this, she, she has to be a B'sula. A B'geres is not a B'sula. And they say, it's okay. What's the Machlaikis? Now, take a look at this for a second. Over here we have the word B'sula. That's what the Pasuk should have said. What is B'sula? So if you see, the, the center has an extra Yud, and then 
the one all the way on the left has the extra base. It's the same word, bif sule, but we're breaking it down. So, Rameir says, very interesting. And the other, we have to see, the, we look at it like this because the other ones say the, the reverse. It depends how you start. It's very, very cool how this works. The word besula, according to Rameir, means even some besulim. It doesn't say, ah, she has to have 100% besulim. MMA low what? A begeres would be okay. But here's the chap. Then the Torah is stuck in a yud to tell me that what you thought, it's the reverse of what you thought. You thought a begeres is okay. I'm telling you a begeres is not okay. So that's why you hold a begeres is not okay. Because we start off with the word besula, the begeres is okay. But then the extra yud tells me the begeres is not okay. So then what do I do with the extra base? That shaloi kedarka is okay. Because I would think since a begeres is not okay. And she lost some of her b'sulam. So Shaloi Kedak is also not okay. Biv Suleh tells me it's in the place of b'sulam. Biv Suleh, where the b'sulam are. So Shaloi Kedak doesn't ruin it. And Mamela, he comes out with the reverse. Um, what's the word? Uh, no, no, the outcome. The, 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 what's the outcome? At the end of the day, Shaloi Kedak is kosher by him. But Geras is not. And look at the next drasha. Rabbi Lazar and Shimon say no. If we start that psula means complete, that means that a begaris is not. A begaris is not a complete psula. She physically lost some of her psula as she grew older. Therefore, the yud comes to say the opposite of what you would think and tells me begaris, yes. Here, look. Ramir says begaris, not, because he started at a different point. So they say begaris, yes. And if begaris, yes, so the bifsula comes to tell me that Shaloi Kedarka passes for a Kain Gadol. Okay, let's see inside. Remain, so the Besula, if we would just say the word Besula, which it should say, it would mean, Afilu mixes Besula and Mashma. So his starting point is the opposite of their starting point. He says the word Besula means some, and they say the word Besula means all. Mme la Besula with a Yod, Adika kol Besulim. And therefore, Begeres, not. Bif Suleo, an extra base. Bikidarka in, Shalom Kedarka Loi. Bif Suleo means in the place of the Psulim, and Mimela doesn't have an effect on Shalom Kedarka. Unnatural Bia doesn't, if this woman had unnatural Bia, she's still kosher to a coin goggle. The word Psulo means we're starting off at a different point. Bisula means 100%. And therefore, what? As is, if we just say the word psula, I would say a begeris is not 100%, she's possible. Therefore, the Torah says the extra yod, psula filu mix as psulim, that a begeris, yes. And the extra base, bipsula, you call psula, kayamim, ben bikidarka, ben shlokidarka, and they hold that if she was nivel shlokidarka, she's possible to a coin gadol. Omar Rav, Yudom Rav, nivel shlokidarka, says Rav. Via Shaloi Kedarka is a problem for a coin Gadol. Psula le kuhuna. Not kuhuna kuhuna. Psula le, right in your Gemara, on top of that word, le kuhuna means to coin Gadol. Because a regular coin could even be married to a bu'ula. Forget about a Shaloi Kedarka. What's of bravo? Veloi si eli isha. So, this is talking about a ma'anis. He violated a woman. So the halacha is, he has to pay a knas. He has to pay 50 kesef. And then, the halacha is, if this girl and her father want, they could demand that he marries her. She shouldn't be for the rest of her life an anusa, damaged goods, whatever. They could force him. Not so much chayt iskar, but it's against his will. He thought he's going to get away with it and run away. No, he has to, he's stuck with her. He has to be married to her, he can't even divorce her. Okay. Says Rava, I don't understand the question. It says Rava, it says that you, he has to be, she, she has to be his wife, meaning halachically a proper wife. What's not halachically a proper wife? It comes to exclude a grusha chalutza l'koyin hadyoit. Prat al-mona l'koyin gadol, grusha chalutza l'koyin hadyoit. Bisha Ruyala, I skipped. But let's see, Lisha Bisha Ruyala. It has to be your proper wife. Pratlal Malakoin Gadol, Grusha Chalutza Koin Hadyoit. Ask the Gemara a bomb question. 
This pasuk is coming to exclude that if he's ma'anis, if a kohen gadol is ma'anis a girl, he doesn't marry her forever. Why? Uh, I'm sorry. This almana, he was ma'anis almana. She doesn't. He doesn't marry her. And if she's a grusha, she doesn't even marry a regular kohen. Says gemara chedami ilema bikedarko. If it was regular, be a ma'iri mishum almana tebugle mishum dahavi labuula. So we're going to see later on, even your own mefuta, a girlfriend, whatever, is, is considered uh, a baula. You, you can't marry. And we're saying, no, it's not talking about kedarka. This whole, it's talking about shaloy kedarka. And the Torah is mechadish, that if this guy had relations with her, shaloy kedarka, special halacha, he doesn't, he doesn't have to marry afterwards. So you see that Shaloi Kedarka is not a problem for a Kohen Gadol. Because if, if Shaloi Kedarka was a problem for a Kohen Gadol, I wouldn't need a Pasuk to tell me that this Anusa doesn't marry him. Says the Gemara was turned to Nun Testament base, sponsored by Moshe in honor of the gold star Moti Donut. Sponsored by Moshe Yorin for Moshe Yaakov and Shoshana in both Ruchlins and Gashmis. Says the Gemara, Hamani Reb Meir, he... No, we're talking about Shaloi Kedarka. But look back here. Let's go back to this chart. Look what it says on top. Remeir. And what does Remeir say about Shaloi Kedarka? It's kosher for Kayan Gadol. Homari Remeiri. Virav. But Rav who said that Bia Shaloi Kedarka is a problem for a Kayan Gadol. Shabbalazar. He goes like the next chart. That Bifsula teaches us, like Yerbalazar, that it's a problem. Now I have a Shaila for Doilam. Something to think about. In this sugya, related to the sugya, obviously, uh, we're going to talk about specifically. But I wanted to, to to think if somebody would ask me this, what would I think? I don't know. If a ishes ish has a relation with an animal, does she have to get divorced from her husband? Did, did she uh, a woman who's mizana? She has to get divorced. Is that considered znos? Shaila, I'm asking you, Shaila. No? What are you trying to rachamim? You'd say she has to get divorced. Good. That's what I want to hear. I want to hear if people would say that. Great. She She's chayv misa. So, but you chayv misa if you do witchcraft too. Does that mean you have to get divorced from your husband? You chayv misa if you're Michal Shabbos. What? No. Chayv misa. Oh. But, but for the next five, is he allowed to have relations with her until she dies? There's no way then. There's no way then. He knows. Fine. Says the Gemara, Ik Rebbe Lazar, but if you tell me that, like Rebbe Lazar, that what? That Bia Shaloi Kedark is considered Bia. And, he, and she can't be married to Kohen Gadol. My ear mission Bu'ula, typically, they have a Zaina. So why do you have to come on to Bu'ula? She, she happens to be a Zaina, and a Zaina, by the way, is also to any kind. The Amar Rebbe Lazar, why? And we. We don't really passing like this, but according to Rebbe Lazar, and we're talking about in Rebbe Lazar, so Rebbe Lazar has to hold like himself. Hanoi Habal Pnuya, two singles, Shaloi L'Shei Mishos, they had relations, but they didn't have intent to be Mekadosh one another, to be Mekadosh her. Asa Zaina, she's a Zaina. So anyway, she's Asa to the Kain. Real quickly, I just want to, since we're touching upon it, I want to tell you a couple of halachas here. Hanoi Habal Pnuya, according to the Rambam, Yoiver on Znus, Loisi Gdesha, and Yechayv Malkus. But the Ravid and other Rishayim, they argue, and they, the Ravid asks a bomb question. If uh, 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 two singles, it's, she's considered a Zaina, so then why does he have to pay her, and he gets Malkus, then why, why does he have to pay her a Knas? You don't get Malkus and pay Knas. So they hold that a Zaina is only a woman who's dedicated to Znus. That's, that's her profession, but not a person who's miyached a special woman for himself. Just he wasn't a There's others who say that the Rambam agrees, there are those who say as far as that the Rambam agrees that it's, he was only concerned, the Rambam, that out of Busha, they're not going to bring their girlfriends or whatever you want to call them to the mikvah and then they're going to be over on Karis. That was the Rambam's concerns. I'm, Decided I'll bring it up here. But it's a machalik's rishonim whether or not 
It's a your over some Rishonim say your over is say not Malchus. Okay, there's a whole need in the Rishonim, but the, the famous Rambam that you should consider Zayni Chayav Malchus. Okay, Panu Yabal Panu Yashlo Yashem Ishrus Asa Zayna. Om Rabbi Yosef. So says the Gemara. Oh, we're talking about a case. You're going to Nivala LeBehema, and it's Nivala LeBehema Shaloi Kedarka because we're talking about she's marrying a Kain Gadol here. You're asking me how could she marry the Kain Gadol? She's a Zayna. No. She had be a shalik darka with a behema. The hasa mishum buula ika. She's that's considered bia mishum zayna leka, which is incredible. She's not considered a zayna, but it's considered bia. Omele abayo memarosha. E bula havia. If you consider this regular bia, so zayna nami havia. Then she she's mizana with that. It's in the parsha of arayis, by the way. This animal. Vi zayna layavia. And if it's not if she's not considered a zayna, bula nami layavia. So again. It is a relation with the animal, is that considered bia? It's a terrible thing, you can get skila for it, death penalty. But is it considered znos? Is it considered bia? I told you, the whole masechta is based, uh, it's predicated on, on cases that don't exist and never happened. But we have to know the halacha. It's, it, it's, it's just, uh, we're using our heads here. What does the Torah mean? By the way, uh, t- just to answer your question, what about the 300 kohanim that died every year? There's 300 Yohanim Gdolim, they were bad guys. Those bad guys, is perfect for them. Says the Gemara of Yisrael Le'Av, Now the Gemara says, whoa, throws in something, but we establish Allah by this. Maybe you'll tell me that a behema is like a piece of wood. It's not bia, but it's a piece of wood. And a piece of wood, Shaloi Kedarka, also ruins it for a coin gadol. What's the raya that that's, that, that's impossible? Toilet paper. Every person goes to the bathroom. Every person uses toilet paper, a stone in those days. The, the point is that there's a, a foreign object that penetrates the body and will render every single woman in the world a mukas eitz b'shalai kedarka. So it's impossible. Because then a kind of can't get married to anybody. Every single person, right? So Amela... That can be the, the reason that an animal creates only uh, a chisarn in, like a mukasates. The Gemara wants to say that animals like a mukasates, and that's a problem itself. And we say, no, it's not a problem. So the Gemara says, Oh, we're talking about a coin gadol getting engaged or married to a woman who's nival to another man, but he can't get married to her because she's. Uh, uh, what do you call it? But it's Shaloi Kedarka, by the way. Shaloi Kedarka. You gotta say Shaloi Kedarka, because if she's Nival regular, then forget about it. She's not a psula. So it's Shaloi Kedarka. But she's not a Zaina. Why? Because she was married legally to this guy. Her, her, her mother married her off. So it's not Biznus. She's not an Almana. She's not a Grusha. She's a Mamanis. She told her husband, sorry, no thank you. My mother married me to you, but I don't like you. So she was nivel shalaki darka to him. So that's why she's, we have a case of shalaki darka. And she's not a zaina. She's not a almana. She's not a grusha. That answers the question. That's what Dr. Reb Chaim said before. Who thought I was mad at him, but I'm not. Hello, Omar nivel shero likuhuna. You should know that if a woman was nivel, Kedarka, get it? Kedarka, regularly to behema, that doesn't render her puzzle to kahuna. Why? It's like a mukasait. According to the mandama, it says that a mukasait doesn't ruin it for kahuna. It's a great, it's a nice clean lotion to something that's not a human, meaning to an animal. Even though it's a terrible, terrible thing, and she's chayiv misa, she's she's kosher lakuna. She wants to get married one one minute before she dies. There was a story about a young girl who is in a place called Esaloi. She was in a compromised position cleaning the house. And a dog was boiler like a darko. 
V'chshira Rebbe Likuhuna. And Rebbe said, she's kosher Likuhuna. That's our case. Amar Shmuel ule koin gadol. And Rebbe meant that she's kosher to koin gadol. As the Gemara b'mei Rebbe, the author of the Mishnah, koin gadol mihava. He, he lived in a time there's no Beis HaMikdash anymore. Ella, what he meant to say is really koin gadol. He came to ask him Shiloh. Terrible story, this Meshuggah and a dog attacked her, but she wants to marry this Kayan guy. So he says, not only could he marry her, he, she could even marry Kayan Gadol, which doesn't exist today, but that's, that's how kosher she, she is. Says Gemara Amalei Rav Miparkin, or whatever, the Ravashi, Minah Amil Sadom Rabbanon, Ein Znus Lebeimah, Dichsiv Leisavi Esnan Zoyna, Umechir Kelev. So, just to tell you, the, the, this concept of Esnan Zoyna, it's very interesting. The only animal in the world, if I have a lion and I trade trade my lion for a sheep, I can take that sheep and bring it as a carbon on the base on the base of English on the Mizbeach. But if I have a dog, which I do, Mando, my, my son who went to the Roshiva told him, told us we have to get him a dog, so we listen to him. Don't ever listen, listen to the Roshiva when he tells you to get a dog. Don't listen. Shtuyot. So I want to take this dog and kill it. I mean, I want to trade it for, for a sheep. I'll do it in a second, the drone, I'm sorry. I don't care, I have to bring a carbon to the Mizbeach. You'll take it. But I, I'll, you want to trade? You give me a sheep. So I take the sheep and I want to bring it to the Mizbeach. They say, no, no can do. The only animal in the world, you hear the wrong, the only animal in the world that you cannot trade for a carbon is a dog. So, by the way, Stama, as a side note, you can write that down in your Gemara Daron. A guy came to ask for Yitzhak Zilberstein. Could you say, Le'ilu Nishmas Mando? A guy wants to donate money and say, Le'ilu Nishmas Mando. Rabbi Yitzhak Zilberstein said, yes. For Torah, you can do anything. So Rabbi Yitzhak, I'm taking it in. I'm taking it in. Tomorrow, I hope to see a couple Le'ilu Nishmases. And if there's Le'ilu Nishmas for my dog, I will double it up. That's a shalom to run. Listen to this. So this is a crazy case. This is Mamish Reboi If you thought crazy until now, this is a guy paid a Zoyna to be with his dog. And he gave her a sheep. Is that considered Esnan Zoyna? You hear Nochamal, we have to talk about the case. The case in Gemara. If you pay a Zoyna, the other cases, I forgot to say the other case. You pay a Zoyna for her services with a sheep. So that sheep cannot go on the Mizbeach. It has Tumma, you can't go but over here, you paid a Zayna to be with your dog. Why? I have, okay, whatever the... Never happened the case. I, don't worry about it. Same case. Never happened. But if he did, and you, cannot, you should not be able to take this sheep to the Mizbeach, but you could. What do you see from that? That relations with a dog is not considered relations. Because if it was considered relations, then the payment for that relation would be also to be on the Mizbeach. And you're allowed to bring it on the Mizbeach. Proves the Gemara that relations with the animal... You hear Rachamim? You don't get divorced from your wife. If she has relations with an animal, you don't have to divorce her. It's not considered, she's Chayv Misa. You're going to say bye bye to her anyways in a few days when they chop her, but right now you don't have to divorce her. Right, no Asra. That's what I told you. No Asra. Says the Gemara, and what's the other case? These are reverse cases. The other case is, if you have a Shifcha that happens to be a Zayna and you trade her, that trade is mutter. But Shinemar Gam Shneim, there's only two cases. Shnayim Velo Yarba, they not four cases like Menachem Atta explained before. Torah Abba Rana Zazmi with his Atzmi, Leyisa. If a Koyin um, violates a woman, or Mufutis Atzmi, I'm, I'm sorry to say, but this is like the, the way to explain it is like a boyfriend girlfriend. He convinced a girl. Leyisa, he's not allowed to marry her. Why? Because she's not a Psula. Vimnasa Nasui. So now we have to discuss, what does that mean that if he married her, they're married? It's not mamish like you think. Anus is chaver, mufut is chaver, leisa. But somebody else is anus, mufuta. In other words, she's not a psula from somebody else. Vim nasa, rebbe lezim yakav oimar, vlad chalol. And if you marry that other woman, it's chalol, vechalom oimar, vlad kosher. Should we stop here? We're going to fall into a little bit of a brach. Okay, we're late. We'll stop here. Rabbi Isai, have a wonderful day.